A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's time to now have that discussion on this very latest episode of My Doctor. I am your host, Purity Musel, and this evening we are focusing on autism. You might have interacted with a child with some uh, symptoms that, or signs or, or behaviors that you may not understand what it is, and experts say that it could be autistic disorder, and that's what we are talking about this evening. We brought to you experts who will be or taking us through some of the symptoms and how to deal with that. Remember, you're welcome to be part of the, this discussion by calling us in or even sending a message. The SMS number, the number to use to call us in will be displayed right on your screen. On Twitter, we are at my doctor Ebru TV. On Facebook, we are my doctor Ebru TV. You could also speak to me directly. I'm um, Purity Museo at Purity Museo on Twitter and Purity Museo on Facebook. But first, let's have a look at what's coming up. Autism is a developmental disability that affects how people view the world and interact with others. Characterized by limited speech and a profound social disconnect, autistic people can live a fulfilling life of their choice with the right form of support. Join us on this episode of My Doctor and get enlightened about this and much more. Welcome back to our discussion this evening. We are talking about autism and joining me in studio we have Michael Mutua. He's a special needs teacher. We also next to him is Ryan Obutu. He's one of the child that, has, that is dealing with autism. Then we have uh, Agnes Obutu. She is the mother to Ryan. Welcome to our studios and thank you so much for joining us to this discussion. Thank you too. Right and 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 Yes, and something to make you understand our, to, to our viewers is that tomorrow is the World Awareness, World Autism Awareness Day, and that's why we're having this discussion today. So maybe, Michael, you could take us through what is autism to begin with. Um, <coughs> thank you so much, mm -hmm. um, and uh, thank you for having us mm -hmm. in your studio. You're welcome. So autism is uh, a neurodevelopmental condition. Mm -hmm that's uh, first detected when a child is between two and three years. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm saying neurodevelopmental because it's, 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 it's neural. It affects the way the child perceives the world. Mm -hmm. It affects perception. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from autism affecting perception, mm -hmm. autism also affects <coughs> the child's ability to communicate, right. the child's ability to express uh, himself, mm -hmm or the child's ability to understand what uh, people around him mm -hmm. are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so by saying that it affects communication, I mean it affects both verbal mm -hmm. and nonverbal communication. Right. So when, when, when a child has autism, it becomes very difficult to learn mm -hmm. the everyday nonverbal uh, cues that they get from the people around them. Right. Uh, then it becomes very difficult for this child to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to or the child struggles in gaining meaningful expression. Mm -hmm. Then autism is or comes with difficulties in socialization, like you find a child having uh, difficulties uh, forming meaningful uh, relationships. Right until such a time when people around the child, mm -hmm. uh, you know, engage the child in a deliberate effort right. to enable him or to enhance uh, a socialization, mm -hmm. you see. So basically that's, that's what autism is. Mm -hmm. um, then other times you find autism coming with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with characteristics or with features such as uh, repetitive behaviors, right. a child uh, wanting to do the same thing the same way mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Those are some of the, of the symptoms. Those are some of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But basically when you talk about autism, we say it's a neurodevelopmental right. disorder. Right. First detected when mm -hmm. the child is between two mm -hmm. and three years. Right. Yes. And just before we get to, to, to Agnes, mm. what are some of the, of the specific mm. commonest symptoms mm. that, that one should be looking at and mm. or, or when you see your child 
with these symptoms, you're mm. able to say, I, I guess my child is autistic. There are those red flags. I'll, I'll call them yeah. red flags. Right. Uh, the very first or the earliest red flag should be, or are things like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, in early development, a child should be able to have a, a relationship with the people around him or her. Right. Uh, the child is able to give the people around them mm -hmm. some eye contact. Mm -hmm. The child should be able to get excited once uh, familiar people mm -hmm. join him. Right. Or the child should have should show some 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 interest in participating in what people are doing. Mm -hmm. But you find a child who is not doing any of this. Right. No interest in people around them. Mm -hmm. uh, has his issues giving eye contact. Mm -hmm. um, the child does not really look like they have interest in the people around right. around them. So, so those are some of the earliest mm -hmm. earliest uh, red flags. Like mm -hmm. when we see these, we should like uh, seek professional mm -hmm. uh, guidance and professional uh, advice. Right. So uh, this is now earliest. But at around two, three, when mm -hmm. the child is supposed to be having uh, a few words, mm -hmm. or when the child is supposed to be having those short sentences, mm -hmm. you realize the child is not having any of those, or language is not coming. Right. You see, those are some of the things which should make a parent mm -hmm. to like uh, think of approaching a professional and mm -hmm. sharing some of those concerns. Right. Yeah. Agnes, at uh, what point did you realize that Ryan was autistic? Was he expressing some of these symptoms that, uh, that Michael is talking about? Well, thank you for mm -hmm. that question. It just is on my, yeah. Um, and yes, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, when he was about um, two to three years, mm -hmm. he didn't talk like, uh, you know, normal children. Right. His speech was delayed because he started speaking his last, first words at around five years. Right. But before that, mm -hmm. Ryan used to stay alone. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't catch him, you know, playing with other children. Mm -hmm. And um, even he had issues of eye contact, you wouldn't engage you like now that we are engaging each other. You know, we are seeing each right, other. Yeah. You'd split, you know, split his uh, mm -hmm. eye contact and look far. Mm -hmm. And then, then he had an obsessive behavior. He loved balls. And if you couldn't get a round object, anything had to be made into a ball. Mm -hmm. An orange, a lemon, mm -hmm. and then also his autism came with uh, some level of hyperactivity mm -hmm. but basically the red flag was is withdraw from other children mm -hmm. and then they delayed mm -hmm. the delayed speech right. that is really what uh, made us start thinking oh there's this uh, there's a difference between mm -hmm. this child and and other children mm -hmm. yes i know autism is something that people might not understand what it is at that time were you able to know that my child is autistic no right uh, most people say it, boys t take longer to talk, right? And then the issue of uh, of, of interaction, mm -hmm. it was not known. Like I knew, I got to know about autism from Ryan being autistic, right? Or having autism. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, the person who flagged out um, Ryan's autism mm -hmm. was a special needs teacher right. who used to visit a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And every time Ryan would, uh, would be in their house, mm -hmm. she would see the symptoms, which I didn't know. Right. So she's the one who prodded my friend and told her, just talk to your friend and tell her just to take her child to... to she referred us where we will go. Right. She thinks he could be having... Uh, some some you know some some challenge mm -hmm. in communication she didn't say autism maybe mm -hmm. she already knew right. but she didn't, she didn't say. Want to say but really she's the one who really started the process otherwise right. we as parents mm -hmm. we didn't we didn't have a clue we knew there was a uh, there was an issue mm -hmm. we knew this guy is not talking this guy is not behaving like other normal children in fact uh, in fact the father used to say how come this guy never settles down because when he's awake you would be all over mm -hmm. uh, and then then of course the issue of the delayed speech right yes i know agnes is one among the statistics of many parents who are dealing with such situations they are not aware what it is how common is this condition in kenya right now uh so i'd say at the moment mm -hmm. we might not really have the numbers right but what we know is that uh autism is on the rise mm -hmm. for one reason or another right uh some 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 people say it's because awareness has been created mm -hmm. but basically um we can say that autism has been uh, on the rise mm -hmm. uh, for instance you'll find uh you know if you have a school of let's say a hundred mm -hmm. definitely uh, we have like one child right 
who is within uh, the autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. So this is just an, uh, uh, an approximation, right. an approximation, because mm -hmm. at the moment we don't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. But what we know is that uh, a lot of kids uh, are having autism, mm -hmm. uh, they are being uh, diagnosed every day right. uh, as being within the autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what exactly causes this condition? So a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say is cause is not yet known. Right. The actual cause is not yet known. Mm -hmm. Though research is, 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 is happening every day, more so in the developed countries. They are carrying research every day mm -hmm. uh, to try and explain to everyone mm -hmm. what exactly causes autism. Right. So what at the moment we have is asso associations. Mm -hmm. Like um, certain things are being associ associated with right with with autism mm -hmm. but the exact 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 cause mm -hmm. uh has not yet been found right and uh, uh like i said research is still happening and as people in special special needs education mm -hmm. and people working with children with autism mm -hmm. we hope very soon we shall be able to know and find out what really causes autism right yeah and maybe getting to ryan ryan what do you love doing uh, for me just the autism the they have to understand what they have to say. So, mm -hmm. like mostly people who love how to do the sign languages, right. or they don't know how to speak. Mm -hmm. Some of them, like uh, for the students, some who does sign languages, mm -hmm. says like, how are you? Say hi. Right. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Even. When people do, they have dyslexia, some of when when you have dyslexia, mm -hmm. dyslexia, mm -hmm. it's like a uh, when you when you when a child start a child start with the dyslexia. Okay, it's okay. So Thank you. Just just a just a reminder. Just a quick reminder to our viewers on what we are talking about and who we are having in studio this evening. We are talking about autism. Tom tomorrow is the World Autism Awareness Day. Oh, it's a condition that we are talking about here. Actually, from the, the, the Autism Society of Kenya, it is clear that about 4% of people in Kenya are struggling with this condition. And you are welcome to be part of this discussion. Just call us in, ask us any kind of question you want to, any reactions or any behavior you're seeing to your child or even to your friend's uh, child. We have a special teacher here who is really uh, ready to help you in that. Our number to use in calling us in is displayed right on your screen. On Facebook, we are My Doctor Ebru TV. On Twitter, at My Doctor Ebru TV. And following me directly, you'll find me on Twitter. I am at Purity Museo. And Facebook, I am Purity Museo. You're welcome to this discussion. So let's uh, actually let, let me get to Agnes. How, 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 how does it feel? How, how did it feel to know that your child is autistic? Um, of course, uh, mm -hmm. for any parent, right. I can tell you that uh, when you're told that your child has some level of, uh, mm -hmm. let me use the word disability, right. it gets you off guard. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and really, it throws you off balance mm -hmm. uh, because you, you d first and foremost, you don't even know where to start. Right. Um, and basically, it came with a lot of shake-up, emotional, mm -hmm. emotional feelings. Right. It throws you off. But, but you know, when you're dealing with a disability, mm -hmm. the only best thing you can do as a parent mm -hmm. is start to learn accepting early enough. So that when you start, when you accept the condition or mm -hmm. whatever situation you find yourself in, mm -hmm. you are able to help your child faster. But basically, mm -hmm. it presents with denial. Right. Like we used to say in mm -hmm. my house, that um, don't worry, there are, this guy is just delayed. You know, in two years' time, He'll you will okay. catch up with the others. Mm -hmm. uh, then you know you wait for the two years, mm -hmm. or maybe that is just a consolation. How old is he now? Giving us. Uh, Ryan is 22 years. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. and he was diagnosed with autism when he was about uh, three, three and a half years. Right. Yes. And how has it been? Okay, let's just get back to how does it feel. But now, I know disability is, is, is one thing that is not accepted in, in, in our society right now. It comes with a lot of discrimination. It comes with a lot of s stigma. As a parent, did you face any kind of discrimination, maybe in, your f in a family setup from your friends? or even he, ha, him as a person, did he face any kind of discrimination? Uh, that happened a lot in his early years. Mm -hmm. uh, the first challenge was um, because of the issue of hyperactivity. Right. Because he used to strip naked. Right. He used to love 
walking mm -hmm. or running naked mm -hmm. and uh, my siblings would say that uh, my child is spoiled right so now they they, they take it on you that it's mm -hmm. you who is uh, not able to discipline your child right and then now when he started uh, being integrated then the other challenge was uh, mm -hmm. getting him in fact diagnosis in this country mm -hmm. those years was a challenge mm -hmm. well a lot has changed but it's still a quite a challenge right. because it's it's expensive when you really want to get you know the professional diagnosis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um getting the proper diagnosis was uh, was the challenge right but eventually it was it was that some would you'd go to one person and they say uh, they, they, they would say because he's not talking it is speech therapy he needs right. so they are not giving the mm -hmm. label of that is autistic right. or he has autism. Mm -hmm. But eventually that happened. And then he, he started going to school when he had the uh, small speech. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that was a g greater challenge. Right. Because of his condition, you'd go, I think we changed schools four times. Mm -hmm. You go to one school, and uh, after two, three days, when you go next, mm -hmm. you're told, Mom, please go and see the principal or the headmistress. And when you go, she tells you, I'm sorry we can't have your child here. Right. So you're back home. Right. Then you move to another school. So I think we changed three to four schools mm -hmm. before we could get a school that he could set up. Right. And in fact, we had been uh, advised to take him to a Montessori school system. Mm -hmm. But when we tried the Montessori schools that are now um, within our vicinity mm -hmm. and that we could access, they all refused him. Right. So we ended up taking just any school that we could mm -hmm. we could get him get right. him into mm -hmm. and where he could be accepted so really society really stigmatizes you mm -hmm. and then because of their bizarre behavior mm -hmm. they usually have some peculiar behaviors they'll be doing some interesting things mm -hmm. so when he went to another school in fact one of the teachers incited kids to say that he is mad right because uh, th th they do some they will do we call it basal behavior they will not be they, they will do some things and do them repetitively they can clap their hands mm -hmm. they, they'll just do things that are out of the the ordinary out right. of the ordinary for any normal child mm -hmm. and now people have a tendency to give them labels that either they are mad mm -hmm. and you know now that alone is a stigma right and uh, instead of not even helping that child even overcome their social interaction issues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that aggravates it because now the kid the other children mm -hmm. you no know, stop now you no know, keep off from the child right yeah okay maybe michael you could just take a, is it a condition that one is born with or it develops as a child grows so um what happens is that it's a condition that uh one is born with it's congenital right. right only that in the early years or in the early months of development mm -hmm. it's not very possible to pick right. the, 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 the symptoms mm -hmm. maybe before one year uh maybe one year a few months mm -hmm. until a certain time uh, is when you start seeing some mm -hmm. that this child is seriously having some challenges. Right. So all this time we can say it's congenital. It's it's something. It's a condition that one is one one is born with. But it's able now to one is able to know after after a certain mm -hmm. uh, age right. is when now you are able to see this child is not really able to socialize. This okay, child. Okay, Michael. Let me just delay. cut you off. There's someone who is calling us. Let's just yes. see that call first. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. How are you? I'm okay, and you? Thank you. We are good. What's your What's your name, and where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Libya. Yes. I'm uh, I'm calling from from Libya. He's calling. You're calling from Libya. All right. All right. But I'm uh, But I'm a teacher in Nakuru. Yeah. I have a child in my, in my class that is, I don't know if he's autistic because I believe sick. Mm -hmm. And he never told me that he has autism. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get him to the school that he was able to get him to the school that he was able to get him to the school that he was able to get You said you have a child in your class who is, what characteristics is he? Okay, he, he, he never told me. Yeah. He mingles with other kids. He plays with other kids. All right. Yes. So uh, and he grows a lot. The mother said that uh, he he wanted to take him to Nairobi. Mhm. Mm and uh, but he he thought the therapy was very expensive for him. Mhm. Mm he was paying four thousand per hour. 
Okay. All right. All right. And maybe how we can help. Okay, thank you so much for calling. Right. I think you've heard okay. what the lady is asking yes. about. Maybe we um, could respond to her first. Yes. <coughs> she said she's a teacher in Akuru and right. in her class she mm -hmm. has a child who is not yet uh, having speech. Right. I didn't get the other one. Mm -hmm. But what I can advise you is this, that uh, even after seeing all these symptoms in a child, mm -hmm you cannot just go ahead and decide that this child has autism. Right. There are specialists mm -hmm. and we have professionals mm -hmm. who carry out uh, an assessment. Right. And then after carrying out an assessment, using certain tools, mm -hmm. they're able to tell you if this child has autism right. or not. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, one of the challenges we are, we are, we are having is misdiagnosis. Mm -hmm. A child has a different condition. Maybe they're having uh, attention deficit disorder, attention mm -hmm. deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. Then we look at the child and automatically we decide this is autism. Yeah. And then once we decide this is autism, mm -hmm. the intervention we are giving is wrong. Right. So what I can advise the caller is have the child or advise the child, right. the parents to take mm -hmm. the child for an assessment. Then right. the assessment will tell you mm -hmm. if what you're dealing with is autism. autism. And then after that, you'll be in a position now to come mm -hmm. up with an intervention plan. All right. Maybe Michael you could tell us what other condition that mm. is closely or that shows uh, uh, symptoms that mm. are close to that of autism. So uh, one thing that you have to know is that when you're talking about autism, mm -hmm. autism is not one thing. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's it's not a fixed thing. Right. Let me loosely put it this way. Yeah. Autism is a very, very wide spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, and the features you'll see in one person mm -hmm. or one child are mm -hmm. not exactly the features you'll see in, in another, another child. In another child. Right. So Every person tends to display their own mm -hmm. peculiar traits. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, a child who is having issues with paying attention right. and being settled, sometimes such a child can be uh, mistaken mm -hmm. for, uh, I mean, as, as having autism. Right. Like I said, we have attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. A child who cannot see it, mm -hmm. he's always on the run, he looks like he's always high on energy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, if we are not cautious mm -hmm. to look at the situation properly, mm -hmm. we may think this is autism. Right. Others have that uh, attention deficit, but with hyperactivity. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we might get to a point where we, 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 we mistake that for, mm -hmm. for autism. Right. And the best thing always to do is take this child through mm -hmm. a proper assessment procedure. Right. It takes time, but at the end of that assessment procedure, you're mm -hmm. able to know which condition you're talking about or which condition you're handling. All right. Yes. Okay, let me just try to talk with Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Okay, maybe Hi. you could, wh wh what are you doing right now? For me, I'm in Strathmore University. Right. To do the computer technology. Mm -hmm. It's called Autistec. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you want to become after your school? In, 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 sc in high what, school. What do you want to become? In school. Yeah. Yeah, to do the, to become a chef. You want to become a chef? Yeah. Wow. You love cooking? Yes, I love cooking. Wow. <laughs> That's so awesome for a, a, a gentleman mm -hmm. to love cooking. Okay, D uh, Michael, mm -hmm. what can an autistic child not be able to do or what are the effects of autism okay so uh the effects of autism uh, are many mm -hmm. we have many effects of autism mm -hmm. and uh yes there are things a child with autism may not be able to do mm -hmm. but he or she can do them mm -hmm. when he or she is taken through a uh, proper intervention right so but be, be if without no intervention, the interven if yeah. no intervention right. is done mm -hmm. then it becomes very hard for mm -hmm. this child to integrate right. appropriately in the society mm -hmm. because already this child is struggling with uh, bonding with other people right this child is struggling with forming relationships mm -hmm. this child is struggling with communication right. so in the event that the child does not get proper intervention mm -hmm. or in the event that the child does not get intervention at all mm -hmm. then then he might end up not really being able to be included mm -hmm. in the society. Right. 
and again as a result of that uh, if no intervention is done or if proper intervention is not done mm -hmm. then the child might also struggle in school mm -hmm. because school is all about like uh, a lot of times our schools are all about um, you know the teacher talks the students listen right. so you see now there's a one has to be able to comprehend what they are listening right. or what they are hearing from the teacher so if proper intervention is not done then you might have the child struggling in school right yes okay agnes maybe you could take us through what are some of the issues that ryan used to, or uh, struggles with or used to struggle with especially in school at home uh, different from other children one of the greatest uh, challenges that we experienced with Ryan when he was young mm -hmm. was his hyperactivity. Right. Because he would never settle down, mm -hmm. so we were all never settled. Right. And he used to, to disappear. Mm -hmm. In fact, of memory are three incidences, mm -hmm. but Ryan disappeared on us. Eh? Right. One time I was going to see a friend of mine in Limuru, mm -hmm. and then you know I was in a two dog car. Right. You know the way you keep your luggage. You know a child is a luggage to a parent. Right. You keep your first luggage down, then mm -hmm. you turn to pick your handbag, and turning, he was gone. Right. And for thirty minutes or like one hour, mm -hmm. it was a nightmare because I don't know how they ran fast. Right. You know, eventually got into a shop mm -hmm. where there were balls. A supermarket because of that obsession the only thing that held him mm -hmm. was the balls but then that's how we discovered him. Right. then the other time was um uh, w when they like something mm -hmm. they get so obsessed with it mm -hmm. that that is the only thing that occupied their mind right he loved water and he liked, liked a gentleman i was teaching in the Muru girls one time mm -hmm. and um that time that was in the in the in the, in the late 90s mm -hmm. And uh, he disappeared one in evening, and we are looking for him, and he had gone to the swimming pool. Right. And he, of course, he didn't know how to swim. Mm -hmm. And he was playing with water, but by good luck, mm -hmm. this lifesaver, who was his friend, right. whom he was obsessed with, mm -hmm. was in the swimming pool. And he's the one who had him, you know, toppling the water. Right. The other time, the worst, in fact, of them all was when he disappeared and got into a matatu. Right. And the matatu spent off. But a short distance, they put him aside, mm -hmm. and then they continued. Then as we looked for him, and we couldn't get him. Right. So he was on in the middle of a, you know, a highway. Mm -hmm. A highway, the route to Limuru, the highway. And uh, he's walking, uh, uh, you know, on the opposite direction, right. and vehicles are going. And he's not aware that of the danger of, of the vehicles. Right. And really, that was uh, one of the greatest challenges. Mm -hmm. The other great challenge for most parents with children with autism is that they have delayed toilet training. They may develop toilet training mm -hmm. for one area and the other one is delayed. Right. That, like he stopped susuing in bed when he was one and a half years. But uh, the long call, that, that took on until when he was after six years. Mm -hmm. and that was another stigma. Right. You go to visit a friend and then that happens on him. And you know the next thing is those ones of their lady queuing you. Mm. You have a big child who cannot take themselves to, yeah. to the toilet. Right. And even in school. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are some who even stay until they are late in their teens mm -hmm. uh, before getting toilet trained. Uh, for, for him, I think he got to toilet trained at around six, seven to eight years. Right. So you can imagine a big child of seven years mm -hmm. and they are doing it on themselves. It's right. really, that becomes, that mm -hmm. becomes a challenge. Right. And then, of course, I can tell you speech, when a parent has a child who doesn't have speech, right. it's a challenge. I used to pray to God that my child doesn't call me ten names. Just mm -hmm. call me one name, right. mom, and I would have been comfortable and happy with it. So right. I thank God that at least now he can talk and, mm -hmm. um, and say many things. So really... The, the, those are some of the really many challenges that uh, that come and then breaking things in the right, house right. he loved breaking things mm -hmm. he broke the tv one time it almost killed him and later we got to learn that it's really not the tv or the cups mm -hmm. or the thermos right. he was breaking he loved the bang voice you know oh. when something falls eh? right. that bang oh. the, he, he like for him, he likes it. I know it's destructive. Right. So you realize they will have different things that um, they will like, mm -hmm. some of which are, are destructive right. even to, mm -hmm. to themselves or can be dangerous to right. them. Right. Yeah. Are there some that he, he stopped doing them as he grew up or he still does what he used to do when he was little? 
in fact i think he stopped doing almost all of them right and mm -hmm. it is as a result of what um the special needs teacher mm -hmm. michael talked about mm -hmm. about intervention right uh Autism, you have to start intervention very early right. because it is basically a collection of behavior. Right. So, and, and then I think as they grow, maybe they become aware, but mm -hmm. I think for with intervention, mm -hmm. they be used to do like this. You know, so we used to enjoy him that what camera is this? So mm -hmm. every other minute he's mm -hmm. doing some funny uh, motions with his hands. Right. And, uh, and over time, now that with therapy, that stopped. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the potty training was right. done also even as a result of, mm -hmm. result of therapy. Mm -hmm. Even speech, the occupational therapy and other therapies that you engage also, you know, uh, help in the child mm -hmm. coming down fast. Because right. I think for him, his hyperactivity had to come down. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, to even focus, you know, con uh, uh, children with autism have mm -hmm. a problem with attention. Right. And uh, well, without attention, then they are not able to, mm -hmm. to to learn. So so then that way also because of now that intervention, then he toned down. Mm -hmm. And then with toning down, the speech started, mm -hmm. started, started coming. Right. Yeah. Michael, what are some of these interventions for autism? Um, we have a number of them, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> autism uh, interventions. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is... Um, when working with a child with autism, a number of professionals are required. Mm -hmm. Every child requires a team. Mm -hmm. And this team basically has to comprise of people like a special needs teacher. Right. A special needs teacher, this has to be someone who is trained in specific approaches and specific strategies right. of teaching this child in class mm -hmm. because number one what, what you have to know is that this child is learning differently right he's not learning the same way uh, any other child is learning mm -hmm. so a special needs teacher has to be there mm -hmm. for educational intervention right uh, secondly, uh, like we said, this child is struggling with communication mm -hmm. speech development. Right. Uh, so there has to be someone who's doing speech therapy. Mm -hmm. If it's not speech therapy, we like saying there has to be something like speech stimulation. Right. A deliberate effort to ensure that this child learns how to mm -hmm. use their words. Right. If they're not learning how to use their words mm -hmm. for expression, this mm -hmm. child has to be taught how to use some expressive gestures. Right, right. Michael, just before we get into the details yes. on that, my director tells me it's time to take a short break. Okay. I know okay. we all need it. So yes. we're taking a short break. We are back shortly. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.